I wonder why the microphone was muted. Eh, I'll fix it. What is up, you corny sods? <sighs> How y'all doing? You good? Good, I'm good. How good am I? Well... Computer. Computer. Good morning. Good morning. Today in 1960, that modern Stone Age family, the Flintstones, made their first television appearance. It was the first animated series to air during prime time. Yabba Dabba Do. Here's the latest from your flash briefing. From Sky News. From the Sky News Center at 7, a man's been charged with the murder of Tupac Shakur nearly three decades ago. The rapper was just... Oh, I don't care. ...the victim of a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas while in the passenger seat of a BMW. Was widely thought of as one of the most influential hip hop artists of all time. No, he's not. Jason Johansson from the local police department explains what he thinks happened the night he died and the role Dwayne Keith D. Davis had. After Davis obtained a gun, he entered into a white Cadillac along with Terrence Brown, DeAndre Smith, and Orlando Anderson. As they were driving west, they located the black BMW. They pulled up near the passenger side of that vehicle and immediately began shooting. Computer. Mm -hmm. Pause. That's what I wake up to. Usually at about ten o'clock uh, usually about seven o'clock in the morning. My alarm goes off and it does that and whatnot. And um there's an old saying. Well for me it's an old saying, but it came out in a book and it says I used to dream of wolves. And the smell of ash as my home world burnt. You know, I find it hard to actually relate to a lot of, um, what's the word, to a lot of, uh, characters in, in, in books and stuff, but there's one character, Ishtan Kantor, K on the Black, Kingbreaker, um, I can relate to him a lot, um, he's part of, he's the main character from the, uh, two book audio drama series, uh, Talon of Horus and the Black Legion. Two separate novels. Um, the first one, he talks about how he came across Abaddon the Despoiler, um, and they formed the Black Legion. And the second one is how uh, a uh, Chaos Lord uh, devoted to the, the Mark of Nurgle, my Chaos God, uh, was a thorn in Abaddon's side because they were both after Draconian which is uh, Abaddon's uh, demonically possessed sword. Well, as he's talking to you, the narrator, slash the Inquisition that has him chained up and is talking to him and whatnot, I found myself more and more relating to the man. Uh, lately I've been dreaming, not of wolves, well, sort of, um, As you guys know, or may not know, I did serve in the British Army, 3rd Armoured Regiment, tank driver, and, um, I suffer from PTSD, I've been diagnosed with ADHD, and I am waiting to hear back on some tests about some other medical underlining issues. So I'm already <laughs> I'm already battling depression as it is, and I'm not even joking. My table is full of pills and 
what one that I've got to take daily just I don't see the point of why I have to medicate myself because other people lack the self-control to not be around someone else when they're kindly and politely telling them to shut the fuck up and go the fuck away. I'm also torturing myself a little bit. Um, I got a flea up my ass about wanting to get a car. It's a simple, simple little car to get me around. Um, it means I'll be able to drive and just go for drives, you know, get away for the weekends kind of thing, you know. Uh, more freedom for me. Most notably, I'll be able to go see my daughter. I would be able to um, go see my mum. Go see my friends. Go pay my respects. Just, just the thought of it, you know, something to work on, you know, with my hands. I'm not sure what got me more happy, the car or the idea of the car. So there's this silver Ford Fiesta. It's not a big car. It's a, it's a little four-door hatchback economy, 1.3, 1.6 uh, little car. And um, I noticed that it had been parked in this little car park near where I live for about three, four years. It's just been parked there underneath a tree. You know, going nowhere, doing nothing. And I was saying to myself, I was like, I wonder if it's abandoned or for sale or whatever. So that's one of the things that people in the UK love doing and it fucking pisses me off. Um, I might go on a bit of a rant here, and I do apologise if I do, but people will buy a car, drive it into the ground, and because parts aren't readily available, because England in its fucking bullshittery fucking... We have to meet EU quotas. This is why I'm fucking glad we left the EU, bunch of wankers. Um, England basically shut down every fucking scrap metal merchant and salvage merchant you can think of. So car, we have no pick and pulls. England literally has no salvage yards anymore. So why my mum sold my dad's salvage yard. Um, to a German conglomerate. And all they did was shred everything in the yard. And then sell the property to a property developer. And now there's blocks of flats and shit. Right literally where my dad's business used to be. Breaks my heart. But um. So, I know exactly what's wrong with the car. Um, it's got some minor... It needs new new brake... Need, need, needs new front rotors, new brake pads, um, new tyres, uh, and an issue with the fuel rail. Uh, 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 the fuel line from the, from the tank to the motor. Minor stuff. Stuff you can do in a day. Literally, stuff you can do in a day. If you know what you're doing. And I know what I'm doing. So It's a Ford. So I'm a Ford mechanic. So I know what I'm doing. Um, so I'd need a jack. Jack stands. Torque wrench. Um, parts. Yeah. I could probably do it in a day. If not maybe over, over a weekend. So start on a Saturday. Be done by a Sunday, Monday. No, you know, I'd probably start on a Friday and have it done by Saturday night. Be out and driving around Saturday. Take it to an MOT station, have it pass its MOT, get some insurance on it, and be fucking rolling.
It's a manual. Is that a downside? Mm. Yes and no. See, this is the thing. This, this, this proves to me how inept the DMV slash whatever it is in your country is called. Because if they all want us to go to electric cars, what they don't realize is, is every electric vehicle is an automatic. They're not manuals. You can put it into manual mode, but once the battery goes down to a certain level, it automatically switches over and says you're shifting too late. You're not efficient enough. I'm going to take control. And literally, you're now fighting with the car. Don't believe me? Get in a Tesla. Go to a Tesla dealership. Ask them, do any Teslas come in a, in a manual? They'll laugh you out of the building and say no. Because don't you know, computers know more than you. No. There's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. Intelligence is understanding, wisdom is the knowledge and understanding on how to apply it. And that, sadly, is something that people just don't seem to understand. Um, got temporary banned on Discord. Uh, well, this computer. I think it was an IP config issue uh, because I have been trying out a different router to try and get the... Um, uh, seven days to die server working but when i did that discord said no we don't like that and so i couldn't i could access my same discord account on the other two computers on my phone on my laptop but i could not access it on the one computer that i spend a good 60 to 70 percent even up to 90 percent of the day on and it was annoying <laughs> Because I'd hear a Skype message and I'd have to check on my phone and respond on my phone until eight install, uninstalls and reg edits later, eight, I finally got it working again. Piss me off. So, right now I'm not sure if it's the idea of owning a car that I love or a project to work on. So what I might do is just fix it up and flip it. You know, pads and rotors are about 150. Fuel rail is going to set me back about 30. My time, that's the thing. Never sell, your sh sell yourself short when it comes to your time because you can't get your time back. Okay, let me understand this. Let me, let, let me pass on this little word of wisdom to you. Okay, you can be as efficient in it as you want to be. There are only 24 hours in this day. We need to sleep a minimum of seven hours to be efficient. Okay, that's seven hours gone. Do the math. Do, do the maths. Seriously. So no matter how efficient you try to make your life or how you try to make yourself, you're always going to have to put a value above a certain level on how much your time is worth. This is why when people ask me to do commission pieces, like miniatures, things of that nature, and I give them my quote, they're like, oh, well, um, uh, um, I'm like, look, listen, I know it's pretty high, I know it's high, but the point is, I'm having to sacrifice time away from my family, my streaming, my this, my that, and I break it down to this person as to why I would charge this much for painting this miniature or this diorama, or whatever it is that they want. You know? When I 3D print stuff, okay? My print, my software I use tells me how much resin I'm going to be burning, how much resin I'm going to be using, and how much it's going to cost me per, per, per milliliter per bottle, but it breaks it down for me. And that my minimum charge should be this. Because it also takes into account, it doesn't, it doesn't take into account the cost of electricity, it also doesn't take in the cost of, uh, of, a, of a failed print. It just says this is the minimum it, it is going to cost me. Okay? Take into account that sometimes you will get failed prints. 
take into account that, it, that your electricity isn't free. You know, take into account that your screens are not free, your FEP sheets aren't free, your um, IPA, whatever it is that you use to clean your product, is not free. Your washing cure cert station is, is, is not free, you know. This is why when people say, why am I paying 45 50 60 70 up to $80 for one 3D printed miniature, you know, when I can go to somewhere like... Uh, Forge World or whatever and get and I'm like okay yeah yeah you do realize that a, a Titan from Forge World will cost you two grand yeah two thousand pounds and you have to do the majority of the work prepping cleaning building oh look a part doesn't fit guess what boil it in water why because our molds are shit there's a reason why people laughed when Games Workshop named their company Finecast. There's nothing fine about their casting. There's nothing fine about their quality. There's nothing fine about that company. I mean, Games Workshop have literally openly said that they've lost three million pounds with their fucking uh, 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 streaming service that's shit. I'm sorry, there's nothing on Warhammer Plus that I want. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. They went to all these independent content creators on YouTube and said, sign this, sign this, work for us, get paid peanuts. They strong-armed and bullied and slap lawsuited a whole bunch of really good content creators to work for Games Workshop, not get any kind of fucking recognition. See, back in the day, if you looked at, through all the previous codexes, it would say art by John Blanche, or these miniatures were painted by John Fotty, or this, or that, or this, or that. It literally lists the artist that painted the miniature, or the artist that did the grab the, the, the art. Doesn't do, don't, don't work like that anymore. Games Workshop does not give a shit about its, 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 employees anymore they don't they just don't I've still got friends that work at Games Workshop that would sooner rather slit their wrists but they got bills to pay and I'm not saying it's every store I'm just saying it's certain stores that are in their, their high turnaround areas and as you guys know I've, I've, I've made no bones about this I used to be in the retail sector of Games Workshop I used to work the floor I used to sell um, and I remember one day we my roommate was coming in to buy a whole bunch of Warhammer Fantasy stuff he was playing was it Vampire Knights? no I was Chaos, he was, mm. he was uh, the, the, the Skaven, Skaven, sorry, Skaven, he was a new plastic Skaven that came out, and so he filled up his little tiny little shopping basket full of, Sk it's full of Skaven stuff, and I came over to cash him out, Manage floor manager taps him on the shoulder and says, Dan, go help that guy over there. Some guy who had no interest in buying anything because he's literally just doing this. We all know that one person who's just staring at the blister packs. He's just there to, 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 to spunk time because his wife's in a different shop or whatever. And I'm like, but I'm dealing with a customer. He goes, no, no, I'll, I'll deal with this. So I lost out on the commission. I lost out on the sales. Because back then it was commissioned. It still is technically. And did that guy I went to buy anything? No. No. He's like, oh no, I'm just looking at you. I'm like, okay. Well, if you need anything, I'm right over here, sir. Turn around and... My manager had, you know... Got halfway through my friend, my friend's basket, cashed him out. 
lunch break comes around and I said to him, I was like, look, listen, why did you pull me off the till when I was in the middle of a sale? Taking all of my commission. What, why? Why? And he was like, well, I just genuinely thought you might, might, might have wanted, you know, and I'm like, no. You fucked me off because you're the man, you, you, and he was just made manager. Okay, you fucked me off because you've just been made manager and you wanted to confirm that extra sale because you want that money in your pocket. If you need money that fucking bad, guess what? Go downstairs, go around by the dumpsters and start blowing people for fucking 20 quid a pop. Don't fuck over your co-workers and your team, all right, by pulling your bullshit rank. Because the next time you ask me to do something, unless you are making it completely clear to me that it's because you're asking me as my boss, I will tell you to go fuck yourself with the new plastic giant kit. Do you understand? And I got home that night. My roommate was there with, with all the big stuff, and, and he was like, you want to help me put some of it together? I was like, let me take a look at your receipt real quick. So I took a look at his receipt. Now, I'm not sure if you can still do this, because I've not been to a games workshop and got a paper receipt in forever. Um, but back then, if you looked at the last four digits, at the final end tally, those four digits would be the, the, the sales assistant's number. And it was my number. So I got the commission. <laughs> I was still logged in on the till. <laughs> he didn't log me out. <laughs> so when paycheck comes around, it's right there. Sales commission percentage bonus da 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 I was like and my friend and my friend was like what's going on I'm like we're going down the pub <laughs> and we went down the pub with a couple of beers can't do that now because beer's like ridiculously expensive it's like fuck's sake you'd have to be, you have to be a millionaire just to be a pisshead nowadays oh oh gosh anyway yeah uh we're doing good can see the sponsor logo right there coffeebrandcoffee.com uh, please guys go check them out uh, links will be in the video description i greatly appreciate it uh, just use the links check them out see what they've got they don't just do coffees they do loose leaf teas cocos they do uh, bundles they do gifts for christmas father's day mother's day anniversaries you name it they can and, and it's not a drop shipping company they roast the, the, the coffee beans literally per order so when you order they go okay so we need this and they'll, they'll roast them you can have them whole bean or ground you know so check them out please 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 just check them out check them out i greatly appreciate it you're helping a small american company and in turn you're also helping me okay like i said uh it's owned by a guy who lives in wisconsin wisconsin This is a coffee time with Cobra, so I assume why the hell not? He's going to be sponsoring. Uh, a, 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 the company has sponsored me for this this and next month. Yeah, so we're doing a two, we're doing a three month trial, a three month a three month trial. And if it works out, great. Uh, I also have potentially another sponsor lined up for the painting streams. Uh, so it's a company called Pro Pro Krill. Uh, they are a paint range miniature company here in the UK. Um, so yeah, that'll be fun. I will be buying, I will be buying uh, some of their basic sets, testing them out, doing a paint review video on them. And if I like them, uh, I will reach out back out to them and say, okay, uh, match what I purchased. So if I buy, you know, 60 pounds worth of paints, they get another 60 pounds worth of set paints from the other set ranges i don't have send it to me and then that way it's not necessarily an influenced 
kind of review because I'm, I mean, the first series of reviews I'll be doing, I'm paying for the products. So it's not like it's a paid promotion, that's a difference. See, paid promotion is the company will then give me said product for me to give a review on, you know, then that's technically a biased review in my opinion. This is why whenever I do reviews, I will buy the product myself. And if I feel I got gypped, you're going to know about it. Um, this is why I bought my copy of um, of Chidi Box Pro, the new one. Uh, is it 1.4, 1.5? I think it's 1.4. Let me double check. It's 1.4.1. Yep, yep. Now I'm looking at it right now. Cool, 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 cool. 1.4.1, which is the newest version, which is Can Q. I like that. It's Can Q. It's Can Q. See my GD Box Pros. Let's see, it doesn't need any updates. No, no updates. Cool. Because sometimes your software needs little micro patches. But no, it's fine. Um, so yeah, I've got some Death Guard stuff on the printer that I've got to get off. Um, I like to build small little war bands um, for boarding action things of that nature it's a small little skirmish based 40k skirmish based game i'm doing one um where i make my own little war band um i also am working on the death guard army itself for mortari and mortarion there's also a comic convention um that's going to be here in reading here next month um, hopefully I might be able to get the majority of my Bounty Hunter armor ready. Um, so if I can, I will be, uh, if I can, I want to go to that convention in my Mando armor. But I've got to lose some weight. I'm at 115 kilos, which is fat. For a man, I'm, I'm six six one, 115 kilos, uh, which is a little bit on the obese side, because uh, my body fat to muscle ratio is a little bit off kilter. Everyone keeps looking. He's like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" I'm like, "Yeah, I've got a big neck and whatnot because I used to play rugby, um, but no cauliflower is." Everyone keeps thinking, how are your ears not cauliflower? It's like, not every rugby player has cauliflower ears. Not every MMA fighter has cauliflower ears. Okay? Sometimes we actually take care of our fucking heads, but we're in proper protection. You know? And, and stuff. Plus, I was also in the midline or the backline in scrimmage. I wasn't always in the front line. Yes, I've got a neck the size of a fucking rhino. You know? But, um, again, that's because... That and boxing. Um... So no, in fact, the stronger your neck is, um, the more uh, impacts you can take uh, in the head. Because most concussions happen when the head snaps, because the brain's still going in the momentum of the head. So the head stands still, so then your brain ends up smacking the inside of your skull. That's what causes the concussion. But if your neck is wide enough and you've got the correct defense, I play pe I do peekaboo. If you don't know what it is, it's a form of boxing style similar it, it's what Mike Tyson used to do um, where you're literally using your gloves and it's not Philly shell Philly, Philly shell is, is literally you're using your shoulder and your gloves this is why if you look at boxers like um, Floyd Mayweather they wear ridiculously oversized gloves because he's using his gloves to, to parry the punches of his opponent you know he might as well be fucking wee boxing at that point which is why I'm sorry, Floyd Mayweather's bot fights are so fucking dull and boring. I literally fall asleep in every Mayweather fight. Just... <laughs> uh, uh, what? And he keeps going, well, I don't want to get punched in the face. Yeah, I know you don't. 
which is why you run around with an entourage because you're a scared little man. Do you see Mike Tyson rolling with an entourage? No, because he doesn't need to. He's Mike fucking Tyson. He's a megalodon. You're a guppy. Shut up. There. Um, I'm sorry, but he is. Floyd Mayweather is a scared, tiny little man who thinks fighting people like Connor, I'm washed up McGregor is a fucking flex. It's not a flex. That's like fighting fucking Logan Paul. Come on, please. Logan Paul can't fight. He's all over the place. Whoever his, whoever his trainer is, they need to work with him. He's got no balance. He's got no center. And if you think I'm joking, I'm not. Take a look at how boxers from the 70s and 80s used to fight compared to boxers, and even into the 90s, compared to boxers from 2000 and up. They're all flat-footed. Fucking tree trunks. No style, no flair. No nothing. No snaps in their punches. Nothing. No power. No real power, anyway. I'm not even joking. Most of the trainers of today are... Most trainers of today played probably JVC's Victory Boxing on the PlayStation 1 and think they're a fucking trainer. You're not a trainer. Okay? You're not a trainer. Okay? You're not a trainer. Too many boxers taking PEDs Pissing so dirty, get you sada looks the other way. Pissing so dirty, get the WBA looks the other way. I mean, pissing so dirty that they melt the cup that they give the fucking urine sample to. That's how bad they piss. Nigel Ben's son um, pissed dirty. Okay, so what? What's new? He's got a legacy to live up to. Do I justify him pissing dirty? Absolutely not. But when your dad is Nigel fucking Ben, you've got a legacy to live up to. It's like Mike, it, it, it would be like if Mike Tyson had a son. He has a daughter, but if he had a son, you know. And he decided to go into boxing. You're telling me they would not be comparing his son to his dad. Of course they would. Grow the fuck up. I'm constantly compared to my dad. We are always constantly compared to our parents. Mother to daughter, father to son. Always. Look at Eubanks Jr. Okay? He's even got his father going on talk shows and trying to explain in a... Think he's more articulate when he's not. Shut up. Just shut up. Shut up. Just shut up. Uh, let's see, um, uh, think about it, okay, ask yourself this, how could a fat Mexican knock out, and he did knock him out, knock out Anthony Joshua? Yeah, Joshua got revenge in, 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 in the, 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 in, in the rematch, but the point is, ask yourself this, how did it happen in the first place? Joshua, I'm going to stand here flat-footed like a tree. Joshua. And yet when a big man shows off a little bit of style, a little bit of flair, okay, i.e. Uh, uh, Gypsy King, not a, big, not a super big fan of the Gypsy King. I mean, yeah, you're talking about a man who punched himself in the face. No joke. 
in a professional fight, he literally went to do 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 a I think it was a right uppercut. No, it was a left uppercut. Missed and punched himself in the face. He literally hit himself in the face. Can't live that down, man. Can't live that down. That was on telly. That was on fucking telly, you moron. You can't live that down. So he goes to Cronk Gym. Goes to an actual trainer. Samuel Stewart. Rest in peace. And changes up his entire style. Starts flicker jabbing. That's what that is. The jab that he does is a flicker jab. Hearns. You know? Hearns Hagler. Best fight in Rumble in the Jungle. Hearns Hagler. War. That was where the flicker jab came from. Sets up your opponent because you're blinding him. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. Deontay Wilder got Hagler versus, versus Hearn. And he can't understand that a white man used a black man's boxing style better than a black man did. And actually beat a black man using a black man's style. Oh, it was the suit. Oh, 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 oh I was drugged. You make more excuses than Meatball who got arrested for shoplifting as she was live streaming it. If you want to take the props of winning a fight, you have to take the respect of losing to a better fighter. That is called the art of being humble. Okay, and that's the problem with most boxers nowadays, especially when they're loudmouth motherfuckers who think that speak and believe in it, speak and believe it, speak and believe it, speak. Okay, you, you speak it and you believe it. Okay, then say the words, I got beat. There is a better boxer out there and I got beat. Say those words because that's what happened. Not once, twice. Do you understand? This is why they're what. You don't get it, do you? Why do you think there was no third fight? There was no need for a third fight. You got your ass beaten so goddamn bad in the second fight. You had a lump, motherfucker. A lump on the side of your head. You still are probably walking like Forrest Gump. Run, Forrest, run! Because you got your ass beat that bad. And yet you still want to go on about how you were drugged. It was your trainer. It was... No, 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 no. It was on you. Your trainer can't get in that ring and fight for you. Your cut man can't get into that corner and fight for you. Only you can. You want to take the fucking... You want to take the wins? Also take the losses. That's called responsibility. Do you understand that? Do you understand that that's life? If you fuck up, take responsibility for it. If you get beat, get up, say good fight, shake the man's hand, and then say to him, next time, roles will be reversed. Then you watch that fight. Over and over and over and over and over again until you realize where you fucked up. Then you train not to fuck that up again. And again. And again. And again. And again. It's called the art of being humble. Do you understand that? There's a reason why there's, there, there, there's sports heroes like Michael Jordan. And then there's a reason why there's, there, there's sports artists like Shaquille O'Neal. Everyone looks up to Jordan because he was the greatest. He did this, he did that. I don't look up to Jordan. Not at all. I think he's arrogant. He's arrogant and he's cocky and he's everything else in between. You want to know who I look up to? I look up to Shaquille O'Neal. Why? Not because of the horrible game Shaq Fu. No, 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 no. The man realised that there are people out there 
that would pay 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 dollars and plus for a pair of trainers as his name on it, hence Jordans. But that's not where the money's at. The money's at the $20 range, the $30 range, where people can afford. There's no point in putting out trainers that only a select few can afford. You might as well put out trainers that everyone can afford. That way you've got the majority of the market moron, you know? And that's another thing that, Sha that, that Shaquille O'Neal does. When he doesn't understand something, he invites people that are, are, are experts in it. And just through osmosis, being in the room with them, asking them the most insane and, and, and to, to some people the most ridiculous questions in the universe. Like, how does that work? How about this? How about that? How about that? What if we did this? What if we did that? Yeah. And he tailors his business. You know, he owns J.C. Penney. Do you know that that man, his fortune beats Jordan twice over? And not just because he has an illustrious sports career, but because he's a, a savvy businessman as well. I like I, I like to call Shaquille O'Neal the Donald Trump of, 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 of the black people because he's smart. He's incredibly intelligent. But people won't give him the fucking benefit of the doubt because it sounds like this. Hi, I'm Shaquille O'Neal. I don't like this. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. The man is a fucking genius. The man is a fucking genius and I look up to him. There you go. Yeah, I look up to him. A white man looks up to a black man. Nothing wrong with that. It doesn't matter. It's not about skin. I don't care. It's not about skin. People make it about skin. I don't give a shit. There are some Native Americans out there that I look up to. There are some... Swilla Bravman, okay? She's, she's of Indian heritage. I look up to her. I like the fact that she's trying to do her job, which is defend the British border. But Rishi Sunak, another Indian, keeps fucking her over. I hate Rishi Sunak, not because he, he, he's, he's Indian or his skin or his heritage or anything. It has to do with the fact that he can't lead, that he shouldn't lead. He is not a leader. He is a number cruncher. If he was to go to a G20 summit, and any leader, and I mean any leader, looks at him sideways, he would piss himself. He house a carded his way to number 10. No one voted for him. We don't want him. We want a general election to yeet him out. We don't want him. Has fuck all to do with, oh, Labour might get a chance to get in. No, no, Labour's not getting in. Keir Starmer? No. You've got a girl's name? No, you're not getting in. Most importantly, you literally look like a shit weasel. No, you're not getting in. Plus, you're Labour. No, you're not getting in. Third of all, mm, you kind of got a whole entire party full of racist communists. So no, you're not getting in. You're not getting in. This video has turned into a rant and a half. Holy shit. But long story short. Problem with most boxers of today. Is too flat footed. Not enough style. Not enough training. Real fucking training. All mouth no trousers. Do you understand? And promoters, don't get me fucking started on you venomous, blood-sucking little cunts. I hate every single one of yous. Ugh. You, 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 promoters were those annoying little shits in school that said, Oh, he said this about your mum. Oh, he said this about your dad. Oh, oh, oh. Because they just want to see the fight. That's it. But they want to get paid. That's why most fights never happen anymore, because boxers are fucking greedy, and they've become greedy, and fat, and lazy, and complacent because of fucking promoters. Get rid of the promoters. Do you want to know why most boxers never even come close to breaking legacies of previous boxers? Because of promoters. 
promoters like Don King, Dan Zhang, all they care about is this. To the point where they literally will take the body, like the, the, the boxing associations and things like that are telling them, your fighter has to defend his fucking title, hello. And they go, oh, we'll just put it, take it to court and, and extend it out and extend it out and extend it out and extend it out. To the point where some fighters don't defend their title for up to four years. You should defend your fucking title every goddamn eight months. That's what it means to be champion. It means people are going to gun for you. Stop hiding behind your promoters. Stop hiding behind the fucking money. Stop hiding behind the paywall of if you don't have this, then you ain't getting that. Because guess what? While you're not fighting and they are, you're getting fat. You're getting slow, you're getting rusty, you're getting useless, while other fighters are honing and sharpening their skills so that when you think it's a cakewalk, so that when you think it's an easy streak, when you think you've won a simple payday and you get knocked the fuck out, and the whole world goes, ah, in a fucking uproar. And then you do a Deontay Wilder. Oh, I was drugged. It was my entry ring costume. It was this. It was that. 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 It No. Had to do with the fact that you've become fat, lazy, slow, complacent, and you are fucking useless. This goes for every goddamn champion that hides behind their promoters. If you truly wanted to defend your title and be a fucking fighter. Talk to your trainer, not your promoter. Talk to your trainer and say, who do you think's gonna give me the best run for my money? Who do you think's gonna challenge me with, for this, that's gonna push my skills to the next level? Because that's what you need to do. You need to push yourself. Don't talk to your promoter. Talk to your trainer. Go to actual fight undercards. Look at the up-and-coming boxers and say to yourself, if that boy just stopped lowering his shoulder before he hooks, he'd, be, he'd have a, a lot more win ratios, or this or that, or this or that. And then pass on that knowledge to these upcoming fighters. Go to your local boxing gyms. Watch them fight. I'm going to a local undercard fight here in... Um, Yeah, in October. October 20... I think it's 20th or 21st. My local Irish... Uh, 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 um, social club. Has their own boxing gym and stuff. And they do small undercards. I'm going to it. I won't be in the card. But I'm going. Last name. Monaghan. Irish. Not a plastic paddy. Yes, I speak Gaelic. Not a plastic paddy. And so... I know what I'm talking about. From 11 to... 17, 18. Cooper's Gym, Old Kent Road. That's where you would find me. And I trained... I was fucking good. What happened? Detached my retina in my left eye. Ended my career. So yeah, I do know what the fuck I'm talking about. That's why I'm wearing these. I do know what the fuck I'm talking about. My cousin, my, one of my cousin's boys um, was being bullied in school. So I told him, go to the boxing gym. Learn to defend yourself. Don't start the fight. End it. So he did. Came very fucking good at it too. Got a couple of undercard fights. Still fights off and on to this day. Trains like, he, trains like crazy. 
but he's more into football right now than he is boxing. But the point is, he even turned around and said, if it wasn't for the cardio that I learned in boxing, my football career would be nowhere. And he's a good footballer. He's a good footballer. Henry, you're a good football footballer. But you'd be, you'd be a better better boxer, though. Just saying. But again, his problem is, is he lowers his elbow when he goes to do his hook. You lose power. Yeah, you, you, you get more of a def chance to counter block. But the point is, you lose power. There's a reason why you're throwing a hook. You're throwing a hook because literally you see an opening and you want to do the most amount of damage that you can. So, I keep telling him, stop stop lowering, you, stop lowering your elbow. Lift your elbow up. Lift your elbow up. <laughs> Every time he trains, lift your elbow up. I'm sitting there having a cup of coffee like this. Lift your elbow. What? Lift your elbow. And he was like, my mum keeps saying that to me. What does that mean? I'm like, here, Henry, come at me. Come on, come at me. And he goes, pop. And it was just pop, pop, pop. Now, if you'd lifted your elbow up higher, you would have connected with me first. I, I slapped him. I didn't punch him, but I slapped him. I'm like, try it again. Pop, 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 pop. Stop dropping your elbow. Lift your elbow up more. Finally did it. Pop, pop, pop. See? When you drop your elbow, you're changing the trajectory, which means you're having to put more of your body behind it. Granted, I get it, you want to use the majority of your body into that. And also, technically, if, you, if they're coming back at you, you know, you can bring your arm up to somewhat cushion a blow. But the point is, if your opponent is already open to that punch, they've not, there's no chance they're going to come back with a counter. That's why it's called a haymaker. And so, yeah, but he still dropped his elbow. <laughs> He still drops his elbow. He doesn't listen. He still drops his elbow. Mm. Well, coffee's done. Which means video's done. Thanks for hanging out, guys. It's been a long one. It's been a while since I've done a long coffee time with Cobra. Sorry for the rants. But anyway, so then keep sharing, keep your enemies dying. Couple of reminders out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.